every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. I know something you want to get from your grocer right away, the special Wheaties blackboard package. You see, there's a blackboard right on the back of this package, one you can write on with regular chalk. You can play games, draw pictures, write notes, practice spelling, all sorts of things. And you can use the Wheaties blackboard over and over again, wiping it off each time with a cloth or a regular blackboard eraser. In fact, it's a good idea to get several of these Wheaties blackboard packages so you can let your friends join in with the fun, playing tic-tac-toe or having drawing contests. Or maybe you'll want extra blackboards so you can save your own best drawings. Now, there's no extra charge for the blackboard, nothing to do, nothing to send in. You just pay the regular Wheaties price. So look for the Wheaties package with the sign on the front that says Blackboard. That means there's one of these wonderful blackboards on the back ready to use. Be sure to pick up several. They're at your grocer's right now. Just ask for the special Wheaties Blackboard package. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto... The daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Jim Kinney stood before the warden's desk in the office at Territorial Prison. For six months, he had been imprisoned with a captured outlaw, Dave Norton. Now he was to go free. After a moment of silence, the warden looked up, smiled, and said, Sit down, Jim. Thanks, warden. Jim, it took a lot of courage for you to go through all this, to get in with the lackey gang. How did it work out? Fine, fine. Dave Norton gave me a note to lackey. I'll take it to him at his cafe in Pecos. Good. Lackey and his gang have committed many crimes in the Southwest, including the murder of your uncle, Hank Weston. But we can't get evidence against them. Yes, I know. For a moment, Jim sat thinking. No one except the warden and United States Marshal Drake knew he was Hank Weston's nephew and that he'd agreed to go to prison on trumped-up charges in order to be a cellmate to Dave Norton, who had been formerly with Lackey's gang. It had taken courage to stay in confinement six months, but the toughest part of his assignment was still to come, joining the lackey gang and getting the evidence. The warden suddenly broke Jim's line of thought. After the evidence is produced, Jim, and the gang captured, we'll see to it your name is cleared publicly. I'll do my best, warden, to get the evidence against him. Jim was supplied with a gun, some ready cash, and a horse. Then he left prison and headed for Pecos. A few days later, he entered the Pecos Cafe. Something for you, mister? Yeah, I'm looking for Spike Lackey. I heard you asking for me. I'm Spike Lackey. What can I do for you? I, uh, brought this note. Hmm? Spike introduced me. Sell me. Come on back to my office. All right. Sit down. Thanks. Now, in the note, Dave Norton says you were his cellmate, that you can be trusted and that you need a job, right? That's right. He says you're Jim Kinney and you did a short stretch for helping in a robbery. Right again. Well, if you're handy with a gun, I might use you. I can handle a gun well enough. All right, Jim. I'll try out. You meet the rest of the men tonight at my small ranch. Go there after supper. It's the second ranch house to the left on the south trail. 
I'll be there with them. All right. That's all for now. See you out there tonight. Right. That night, Jim rode to the ranch house, and Spike introduced him to four tough-looking men dressed as ranch hands. Then Spike gave Jim further information about their operations. The men work here as ranch hands between jobs. You do the same, Jim. They come to the cafe like any other cowpokes when they have the time. Yep, that's it. That's it. We all wear masks on the job and cover our trail to the ranch. I keep only about 100 head of cattle just for the looks. We're willing to take you in on Dave's say-so, Kinney. But we'll feel better about you after we see how you do on your first job with us. Don't act so high and mighty, Kansas. You'll take him on my say-so. I'm running this outfit. All right, so you're the boss. But you can't blame us for wanting to be sure Kinney doesn't bungle a job and get us caught. Now, forget it, Kansas. Spike knows what he's doing. We'll help you get started with the gang, Kinney. You'll soon learn the ropes. Uh, thanks, Slim. You gonna have anything else lined up for us soon, Spike? Yep, I'll let you know what and when. Well, I gotta get back to the cafe. Slim, show Kinney where to bunk and find something for him to do around here tomorrow. Right. See you again soon, Jim. So long, everybody. Howdy, The following afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, camp in the hills near Pecos. Why we come here, Kim Wasabi? There have been more gang robberies in this territory recently, Toto. Cafe owner Spike Lackey is suspected of being in with the gang. So far, there's been no evidence against him. Oh. It's about time something's done to get the necessary evidence. You think of way? Yes, I thought of a plan. An outlaw, Dave Norton, was caught during a gang holdup some months ago. The rest of the gang escaped, and he refused to talk. Ah, me. Remember. I'll disguise myself as a Mexican. Then go to Lackey at the cafe, tell him I used to be Dave Norton's cellmate, that Dave suggested he might give me a job. Spike Lackey would have no way of checking my story. That's right. But it'd be risky if him let you join gang. It's worth the risk to get evidence against Lackey and his gang. I'll work on a disguise now. Later, we'll ride to town. I'll go talk to Lackey. Dusk had fallen by the time the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the edge of town and stopped among some cottonwoods for a last-minute conference. We were told yeah. he said before, fella. Toto, I've outlined a plan that may trap the gang if Lackey takes me in. Here, the plan is written on this paper. Uh-huh. You enter the back door of the cafe and stay in the shadows. Things go all right, I'll manage to signal you. And you take that paper to Marshal Drake. He'll remember you and make the necessary preparation. Ah, uh, me do it. I'll go to the cafe. Come in, sir. Come, Scott. Come, Scott. Later, disguised as a Mexican, the Lone Ranger entered the front door of the cafe. He sauntered over and spoke in a low voice to the barkeep. There's a senior lackey here at this cafe, no? He owns it. What about it? It is most important that I speak with him, senor. Well, uh, he's in his office, the door back there. Watch it, senor. Come in. Senor lackey? Yeah. Who are you? What do you want? You perhaps remember Senor Dave Norton, no? Maybe. Why? He is the hombre who sent me to see you. Oh. That's interesting. Sit down. That's it. What's your name? Carlos, Senor. What brings you here? Why did Dave Norton send you to me? Because I was his cellmate, Senor, until a few days ago. He thought perhaps you would find work for me. I'm not particular, Senor Lackey, and I'm very fast with the gun. You, uh, you say you were a cellmate, hmm? Si, Senor. Didn't he give you a note or something? That would be too risky. I might have been searched before leaving the prison. Yeah, that's right. There uh, were just the two of you in the cell, huh, Carlos? Si, Senor. For six long months. Now, if there's something I could do, or anything at all. Tell you what, Carlos. See. Si? I have to ride out to my ranch on business. Why don't you come along? Maybe I'll think of something for you to do after we get out there. 
Well, no, I'm ready to go with you, senor. Good. My horse is out front. Come on. Si, sí, senor. As the two men walked through the cafe, the Lone Ranger managed to signal Toto that he had succeeded. Then he followed Spike to the hitch rack, and the two men started for the ranch. Hold on. Hey, boy. Get up. On the left. On the trip from town, Spike rode in silence. He had no doubt that Dave Norton had sent Jim Kinney. Dave had described Jim in the note and had given his name, and the handwriting was unmistakably Dave's. But Spike was sure the man he was taking to his ranch didn't come from Dave Norton, and he realized the Mexican called Carlos knew too much for the gang's safety. Finally, the two men arrived at the ranch house. Hola. 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 Easy. So go to the bunkhouse, Carlos. I want to speak to the ranch hands and have you meet them. Come on. Of course, senor. Spike, who's that Mexican hombre? What's the idea of bringing him here? I bring who I please, Kansas. Yeah, well, I for one don't like the way you... Kansas. What's it all about, Spike? Men, this is Carlos. He tells me Dave Norton sent him to me. That he was Dave's cellmate for the past six months. Uh, well, how could that be? What about Jim Kinney? He brought Dave's note. Ever see this hombre around the prison, Jim? No. I was Dave's cellmate, and I'm sure this man wasn't there. You're mistaken, senor. No, he's not. I brought you out here because I figured you came to spy on us. Now reach, mister. And this gun says you'll start talking. And if we don't like your explanation, you won't leave here alive. <laughs> We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you gold power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Ordered by Spike Lackey to raise his hands, the Lone Ranger, noticing that every man in the bunkhouse had suddenly drawn a gun, quickly complied. He realized that somehow Jim Kinney's presence had spoiled his plan. He knew he must think quickly. Assuming a look of surprise, he spoke to Spike. This I do not understand, Senor Lackey. What is it you want me to say? You told me Dave Norton sent you. That you were a cellmate, didn't you? See, senor, that but... man, Jim Kenny, was Dave's cellmate up to a few days ago. And he brought me a note from Dave. Now, you lied to me, mister. So you better explain or... Oh, no, senor Lackey. I admit the story I told you is not quite the truth. What is the truth? Go on, talk. Many people, senor, have said I'm an outlaw. But I do not admit it is true. Not long ago, in another town, I heard a lawman talking. It was what he said that brought me to you. Yeah? What did he say? He said a convict named Dave Norton used to work for you. Mm-hmm. Go on. The lawman said he thought Norton was connected with a gang you led. But no one could get evidence to prove it. And I said to myself, Carlos, there's one very smart hombre. If he does hit a gang. So, senor, I decided to come to you. They Dave Norton sent me and hoped that you might get me in with the gang if you really worked with one. That amigo, 
Easy through. Did I say take his gun and keep it till we are, That's sure? Right. All right, All right. Yeah. take his gun, Kansas. All right. I got it. The Lone Ranger had left his fancy gun belt and guns with Toto and had worn an ordinary gun when he went to see Spike. It was this gun that Kansas now took from him. The Lone Ranger shrugged his shoulders and remarked, Bueno, if that is the way you want it, senores, then Carlos will go without a gun. <laughs> you have no choice. Carlos, you ride with us on our next job to prove yourself. But you won't carry a gun. But without a gun... That's sen- the way it'll be. You don't like it? I shall do as you say, senor Lackey. Good. I'm heading back to the cafe. I'll see you all later. So long. Adios. Later in town, Tonto saw Spike return to the cafe alone. He left the cafe unnoticed and reported to the marshal. Half an hour later, the express clerk entered the cafe and spoke complainingly to the barkeep. Ah, doggone it, I have a good mind to give up my job at the express office. Never know what my hours are going to be. Yeah, what's the matter? Now, we got a valuable shipment that has to go on the 5 a.m. stage to the Austin Bank. Mm-hmm. Now, here it is after 9 o'clock at night, and I got to be back at the office between 4 and 5 in the morning. Oh, well, I <clears throat> reckon I'd better get home and get some sleep. So long. Hello. Spike, who had been standing nearby listening, spoke casually. Joe, I got a lot of office work to do tonight, so I'm going back there, and uh, I don't want to be disturbed. All right, boy. Spike went into the office. Then he hurried out the back door, got his horse, and headed for the ranch. Ho, ho, steady! The men looked up in surprise when he entered the bunkhouse. Well, we didn't expect you back here tonight. Listen, listen to me, officer. Yeah? I overheard the clerk from the express office grumbling about having to stay late and get up early because of a valuable shipment that's waiting to go out on the stage. Oh, maybe this is a chance to grab something big. Yeah, Yeah. and a chance to see how Kenny and Carlos do on a job. That's right. Now a couple of you men go saddle the horses and bring them around. Kansas, I want to talk to you outside a minute. Come on. All right. What do you want to talk about? The Mexican, Carlos. I still figure he's spying on us. Yeah, I don't trust him. Well, after we get the stuff in the safe in the express office, we'll plug him. Then make our getaway. Right. I've been suspicious of him ever since we found out he lied to you. He won't do any more lying after tonight. Spike and the gang, accompanied by Jim Kinney and the Lone Ranger, rode to town and stopped in a grove behind the express office. I hope the safe isn't too hard to open. Ah, there is no safe that is hard to open, amigo. Oh, you think you're good at getting them open, huh? See, I'm sure of it. Carlos, we'll all go in and watch you open the express safe. Come on, see. Moving through the shadows, the gang wearing masks walked to the back of the express office. Kansas forced a back window, then went in and opened the back door for the others. Come on. Let's go. A lamp turned low, gave enough light for them to see. Now, Carlos, get busy on the safe. See, senor. The Lone Ranger knelt in front of the safe a moment and pretended to twirl the knob. The men stood tensely watching, and Jim Kinney noticed that Kansas slowly leveled his gun at the Lone Ranger's back ready to fire the moment he pulled open the safe door. Uh, now that he's unlocked. Look out, Carlos! Hey, he knocked my gun out of my hand. I'll settle, Carlos. Stop that gun. Go! No. Hey, Carlos, grab two guns out of the safe. You're all covered. Got him, men! Hold it in reach, all of you. They're muzzling his men. They came uh, in both doors. But you uh, fight your way out. Oh. Oh, it's too late for that, Slim. Better drop your gun. Uh, we give up. The gang quickly dropped their guns and surrendered. Oh. Jim Kinney had taken his place beside the Lone Ranger. Unmask the men. Uh, hey, look. Spike Lackey and his ranch hands. Lackey and his men are the ones who have been what? operating as a gang in this territory. Hey, he's not a Mexican. He dropped his accent. I knew he was a spy. Marshal, I've heard enough while I've been with him to know you'll find plenty of evidence in Lackey's safe at the cafe. Hey, hold on. Dave Norton said you could be trusted, Kenny. Jim Kenny was planted as a cellmate to Dave Norton. 
Joined your gang to get evidence. Oh. I ran into trouble, Marshal, when I told Lackey I had been Norton's cellmate. I didn't realize Jim was working against him until he prevented Kansas from shooting me. Spike, you lunkhead. I knew you were local to bring strangers into the gang like you did. You'll all be hanged for the murder of a rancher named Hank Weston. What? He was Jim Kenny's uncle. So that's it. Spike fired the shot that killed Weston. You can't pin a murder charge on the rest of us. You're all guilty in the eyes of the law. You did a good job, Jim. But you have the man posing as a Mexican to thank for trapping the gang. So this was a trap, huh? Yes, and you fell for it. Uh, the safe door was unlocked. And there were two guns inside, nothing else. That was part of the plan. We were waiting in the shadows nearby. Marshal, I'm sure you'll have plenty of evidence against these men to convict them. Horses waiting outside, Kimosabe. Good. Jim, thanks for your quick action. You have a lot of courage. I'm satisfied now that Uncle Hank's killers are caught. Yes, the main thing is the gang is caught and Spike Lackey is finished. Thanks for your cooperation, Marshal. Todd and I will leave now. Adios, everybody. Uh, 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 Marshal, I... I don't understand all this. I was sure he was a Mexican. Now I, I'm confused. Who is he? A great American, Jim. And a friend to all those who need help. Right now he's in disguise. But he usually wears a mask. You see, he's known and respected as the Lone Ranger. I'll kill the copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.